Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and the other day Apple released iOS 17.7.1 to the public. iOS 17.7.1 was available for anyone that was on iOS 17 that hadn't upgraded to iOS 18 just yet. It's available on iPhone XS all the way up to the iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max according to Apple. There is no file to install this if you want to downgrade directly, we'll talk about that a little bit later. And as far as the overall size, well this came in at a very small 304.4 megabytes. That's on the iPhone 15 Pro and it was about the same size on the iPhone 15 as well. Now, as far as other releases, Apple released the same day while well, we got iOS 18.1 with Apple intelligence, iPad OS 18.1, and all of the other updates to go along with it. Watch OS 11.1 and others. However, if you wanted to stay on this particular update and not upgrade to iOS 18, you can do that. If we go into settings, you'll see here under software update on this device, give it just a second to refresh. We now have the option 17.7.1. We also have the option to upgrade to iOS 18. However, those of you that want to stay on iOS 17.7.1 can do that. I would recommend turning off automatic updates. That way it doesn't update to iOS 18 on its own at night when it's charging or any other time. That way it ensures that you stay on the version you're on. So I would just recommend turning that off and then you can check for updates if there's another one later on. Now, as far as this update is concerned, well, in order to get this update, I actually had to downgrade this phone. My iPhone 15 pro was on iOS 18.1. And in order to upgrade or downgrade to this version, I had to install iOS 17.7 and then upgrade to 17.7.1. Apple has not made any of the files available in order to downgrade. And you have to use a Mac in the finder or windows using iTunes in order to downgrade. I had to fully restore the phone in order to do it and select the file myself. I have a separate video on how to downgrade. I'll link in the description as well, but overall that's the only way I've found that you can install this. So you have to fully restore the phone and then you can restore from an earlier backup, or if you have everything synced in iCloud, it will just work. Now, as far as this update is concerned, well, Apple released this because of security updates. If we go back into photos, when I took a screenshot of the update that says this update provides important security fixes and is recommended for all users. If we go back to Apple's security release website and scroll down, you'll see the latest releases. So as we scroll down, you'll see here where it says iOS 17.7.1 and iPad OS 17.7.1. And it actually says iPhone 10s and later iPad pro 13 inch, iPad Pro 12.9 inch, second gen and later, and then all of the different iPads listed here. For whatever reason, we don't have iPhone SE 2 or the others. But if we go into this, we can see the different contents of what they've actually patched, and there's quite a few significant security updates, from core text to foundation to image IO, kernel, which is the underlying code to the operating system, and continue to go down, we have mobile backup, Safari, and much more. Quite a few significant updates as far as security goes. And for example, with Safari, the description where there was an issue is a custom URL scheme handling issues was addressed with improved input validation. The issue here was maliciously crafted web content may violate iframe sandboxing policy. So basically every device has sandboxing on it with the iPhone, meaning each app is sort of its own separate app and nothing can talk to it. They may get outside of that is what it looks like. When it, we look at some others, you'll see here with the kernel, an app may be able to leak sensitive kernel state, which is again, the main sort of structure of the underlying code for the operating system. So an information disclosure issue was addressed with improved private data redaction for log entries. As far as bug fixes, like I mentioned before, Apple hasn't said anything about that. They just say it's for security fixes and is recommended for all users. So unfortunately it looks like they're not really working on any bug fixes on this. However, that doesn't mean there's nothing included. It just means they haven't mentioned anything. So hopefully they've resolved a few issues if you were having that, but either way, let me know if you've experienced any bug fixes, if you've already updated to this version. So if you're wondering if you should update to this version, if you're on iOS 17.7 or older, I definitely would for the security updates to make sure your device is secure. But as far as anything else in this update, well, Apple looks like they've shifted their focus to Apple intelligence and iOS 18.1 and then iOS 18.2, which is next. So at this point, it looks like Apple's pretty much done with iOS 17, sadly, and hopefully they'll make it available to download a little bit easier for those that want to downgrade. 
how long that's going to be available. We don't really know as iOS 17.7.1 isn't easily downgradable to, and without those files, I'm guessing maybe the next version, you won't have an option. So if you want to have the latest security updates, I would recommend downloading this version and staying on it unless you want iOS 18. When it comes to overall performance, it seems to be pretty good, but I've only been using it briefly here as I just restored it. But many people are reporting on my telegram channel and discord that this is actually quite good and much more stable as far as the overall performance and usability of it compared to iOS 18. So many people have been pretty happy with it. I've seen quite a few people downgrade to it and general performance is good. Now, right after you install the update, it's going to get a little bit warm as it's processing a lot in the background. So I would give that a few days and see how it goes, but we'll talk more about this on the weekend as far as the overall performance and battery life. And speaking of battery life, if we go into settings, then we'll go down to battery under battery. We'll go to battery health. You'll see this phone's only at 22 cycles with 100%. I used it a little bit to review it. And then of course I've used it in different videos, but as far as battery life and what you have to say, we'll talk about that in the weekend follow-up video, typically on Saturdays, but in general performance seems to be pretty solid, whether it's a new phone an older phone or any that supports iOS 17 it seems to be much more refined when it comes to future updates. Well, it's possible we could see an iOS 17.7.2 if Apple has additional security updates, but I would not expect them to fix a lot of bugs unless there's some serious ones or add any features at this point. They're working on Apple intelligence and everything's going into that effort. But as far as updates, iOS 18.2 beta two will probably be out next Monday. Typically they're every two weeks when they first release. So next Monday or Tuesday is when I would expect it with maybe the public beta around that time as well. Many people have been waiting to get in to try out image playground, and then they'll start rolling it out to more areas around the world, hopefully by the end of this year as well. So I would expect beta two on Monday, maybe beta three on the 18th, and then probably a weekly schedule from then and possibly a release in December. Apple hasn't given us an official release date, but that looks most likely but at this point they could change that up. But as far as anything else, well, this update seems to be the one many people want to stay on if they're not interested in Apple intelligence or don't have the option in their country. It seems to be pretty stable and those security updates definitely should help. When it comes to the overall benchmarks, many people asked me to run this and I scored 2,859 for single core, 7,042 for multi-core. Now keep in mind, this is right after installing the update and that's the score I actually had. So let me know how this compares to yours. But again, this could improve over the time that we use it. Maybe the next few days up to the weekend as things complete in the background. As far as anything else, let me know if you found any additional changes or bug fixes in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.